Jesus says it's not from uh, the things that come inside of us that uh, defilement is produced. It's from what's within us, and that which proceeds from us is unclean and passes into the latrine, as the translation goes, that I'm most used to. It's not the stuff that we take in that's impure. Everything in itself is good. Uh, instead, it's the what we do with it or the way it relates to us that makes it uh, unhealthy or harmful or even sinful. What happens a lot of times when people are contemplating their lives is they think, if I can just get the exterior things right, then my life will be happy, right? And then you even get good Catholic students sometimes who, who think things like, I need to find my vocation. I need to find some external thing that will make my life make sense, that will unlock the secrets of my life, that will equip me to do what I need to do in life, and ultimately will produce in me happiness. This is not a Christian theory at all. The, the, the whole communion of saints revealed to us, it could be anything <laughs> that uh, we do or any external circumstance that we inhabit, and that can be an occasion or a place of holiness for us. If you think about some of the great saints, it's not as if Maximilian Kolbe stood in his, or sat in the chapel and said, you know, where are you calling me, God? Okay, concentration camp. Or, you know, Therese of Lisieux didn't discern that she needed to die of tuberculosis at 24. Or, you know, any number of saints didn't discern some horrible, difficult circumstance or some, even some occupation that they found themselves in. And yet they're saints. Why? Because they revealed that in those circumstances that God's love was not prevented from being received by them, that they could still live a life of holiness and virtue in response to that, no matter what the state of life is. And so for every state of life, for every occupation, the possibility of sanctity, happiness, meaning exists for us. It's not assembling all sorts of exterior things to unlock and become who I am. It's instead finding within myself the, the, the place where God inhabits, that I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that I'm a member of the body of Christ. It's from within me that not only comes the bad stuff, but from within me comes the possibility of holiness. Even deeper than my own self to me is God's relationship to me that lives inside of me. Think of receiving a Holy Communion that God actually enters inside of me. Uh, with baptism. He dwells in my soul. I mean, I am a partaker of the divine life of the Most Holy Trinity within me, and I take that with me wherever I go. If I'm thinking about, like, being a doctor or being a lawyer, if, if I have an unhealthy interior life, it doesn't matter if I'm a doctor or a lawyer. I'm going to ruin both of those things. It doesn't matter if I'm single or married. That's not going to unlock the secrets of my life, or a priest or a nun. If I, if I don't have a, a, a proper way of giving and receiving love to God, I can find a way to mess all of those things up. It's not those exterior things themselves that are going to fix the problems of my life. It's me with receiving God into my life to, to, to work out those kinks in my heart, to, to clear out the, the stuff that inhibits me from giving and receiving love with God, with myself, and with other people. And then I can proceed freely to this thing or that place or this person. Then I'm unlocked to, to receive what God has to offer me in any situation. And if we look at the course of our lives in 50 years or so, uh, that's probably going to change a lot. We can't hope to think I'm going to know the future, and that's what matters. We hope to know ourselves, and at the depth of ourself is God. And so whether it's worldliness or uh, misguided Catholic theology or, or sort of practice, it's not assembling external goods that solves my interior problems. And a lot of times when I have interior problems, when I have wounds, when I have hurts, when I have sins, I don't like looking at that, so I try to distract myself sometimes with video games or social media or porn or any number of sort of just like obviously harmful things. But sometimes I try to trick myself into thinking those external good things like devotions or uh, sort of external intellectual projects that are disassociated with my actual life or or conversations that are meaningless and, and time-wasting, or, or sort of experiences, vacations, all these other things. Those are the things that prevent me, or, or willingly prevent me, from actually looking at that which will solve the problems of my life. And that, of course, is allowing God to work in this place. St. James says, where do wars come from? They come from my members, they come from my heart. It's, it's not these external policy solutions where wars come from, or, or external. it's interior decisions by men. Well, where does war come from in my life? It comes from God, a God and the devil, the evil one, fighting it over in the territory of my heart. But it also comes from my consenting to that 
or in the woundedness of my life, not looking at those wounds and not, not hoping to sort of receive clarity or light in them because I'm afraid to go there. That's what makes me unhappy. And so for a happy life, it's not something inter external and it's not something that I can't get to right now. The solution to my life is always internal and therefore it's always available to me to work on. Whether I'm a college student, whether it's finals week, whether I'm home for vacation, whether I'm in this job or that job or that spouse or this spouse, or whatever the case might be, the possibility of my unlocking myself is always within me because especially in our baptism, God is always within me.